Welcome to the Syringia International School podcast Taboo Talks with Tamara Mittelstedt and Beate Burger. As a mother of two now more or less grown-up sons, both graduates of TIS by the way, Tamara combines the colorful field of work of a trained pediatric nurse and now school nurse for many years with the ability to counsel our students and parents and teachers in a difficult life situation and times. Beata is also the mother of two children, a daughter and a son, who are in their teens and preteens and are also students at TIS. As a long-time German teacher in the TIS primary school, she has actually taught all age groups and also brings with her a whole bag of additional experience as a former kindergarten teacher and after-school carer. In this podcast, together we will consider how we can better understand our children's needs, behavior and emotions. Our goal is not perfection, but connection and a relationship. We'll share real-life stories, our own experiences as parents, that illustrate the pains and joys of raising children. We want to clearly show that every child is unique and therefore every parenting journey is different. We hope you will enjoy it. Our first topic is about the two faces of our children. So yeah. what does that mean? Well, you could see maybe a smiling face and a not smiling face and at the same child. But before we go into deep of this, we really have to speak a little bit of the theory because we have three relevant phases of development in children ages. That means Before we don't speak about it, we don't know what children can do, what abilities they have and so on, because sometimes we really expect too much from them. You know, we have three different stages, big stages, we say. We have the early childhood. This is from three to six years old. Middle and late childhood. This is from six to 11 years. And the adolescence or puberty, what we say, 12 to 19 years old. And guess what? My kids are in phase two and phase three. Wow, mine are beyond them, and I'm quite happy about that. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. tell us a little bit about the early childhood, Tamara. Yeah, the early childhood is really characterized by large differences in the speed of the development. One kid is quick and running, one is not quick and running. One is speaking in full sentences with one year or with four years, whatever, and the other one starts speaking with maybe three and is not even with full sentences in the age of five. So I should not be worried mm -hmm. if my child's kindergarten friend is speaking in full sentences already, but my child is still quite... No, you should not be worried because it's quite unsettling. And it's kind of what we say completely normal because each child has their own learning path. Yeah? And it's neither necessary nor possible to have a, like a, like a benchmark there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have so many different development stages and so many different parts there. We have the cognitive development in that age group. It's all done with magical thinking. Everything is centered around them and so on. The motivation development is something that they yeah, uh, have basic emotions, like possibly can recognize emotions with others, but still are very focused on themselves. The personal development, anyway, it's the same thing. It's very, very self concept, a very big self concept. That means they are, for example, have a quite unrealistically self description, very positive self description of themselves. And so is the social de development. The interaction, for example, becomes a bit more complex with with friends and so on. And so also, like cooperative forms in place are changing. So it's all about me, me, me. Absolutely. All about me, me, me. <laughs> And very positive me, of course. Yeah. The next yeah. stage. Huh? Middle and late childhood, six yeah. to 11 years. You may be an expert in that because mm -hmm. this is actually the stage where a lot of things are changing. Yeah? There are major differences in development too. The thinking development is fundamentally changing in that time. And also motivation for yourself to do something, to change things, is, uh, becomes really an issue. The self-image is supplemented by academic skills, social skills, and the one. And friendship becomes a bit more important. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
yeah, to go a bit into depth here with the cognitive development in this age group, it's far more going into the complex thinking, like situation can be considered from different perspectives or the, what we say, egocentric thinking mm -hmm. <laughs> is changing. They overcome that. They only do not only see themselves in the center, they also recognize people around them and the feeling. Um, the information processing becomes far more important. Okay? Emotional development, motivational development is, uh, is changing massively. And, and uh, yeah, so does the personal development and the social development. This age group is actually, from the scientific side, the most interesting part. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's the, the part we're dealing with most in lower school. Yeah. When we tell the kids, yeah. how do you feel when so-and-so does this and that to you? and try to yeah. feel what this kid or the other one is feeling when you do this and that to them. Yeah, yeah that true. We're trying to give them another perspective. Mm -hmm. So they still need guidance, yeah. right? But they are able from their um, ability in the brain to, to realize that there are different perspectives and they are developing empathy, for yeah. example, yeah. or don't see... Now let's say the self-centered position is changing mm. massively. Yeah. However, we have also here different developmental stages. And you should not be worried if one appears more mature than the other, but we should be aware. And that's yeah. very important yeah. for parents, of course, but also for us teachers or, or um, yeah. staff members. In and that's school. what we see in lower school. Yeah. From two, there's, everything is there on the scale from mm -hmm. still self-centered to very very empathetic and yeah. caring for others. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. And when we see the last stage, what we say, or the last stage we are covering here, the adolescence or the puberty, most people say, whoa, the most difficult time. Well, it's the time where the self-discovery really is going on the final point. Yeah? So <laughs> I can tell you, we just went through this. <laughs> And you're just in it. Yeah, yeah. we're just starting. <laughs> the influence of parents in that age is, is decreasing and the, the meaning of friendship is, is increasing massively. So the social, of course, physical and cognitive development um, is starting to, to go to a different position. Oh. And they have different forms, of course, when we look here, cognitive development, personal development. It's really a kind of separation from the parent or from the family from the from the house where they live where where it's safe and all is good but they want to have like independence yeah development of a development of own decisions um making own mistakes developing an own language we often just stare at them with open mouth with girl when they when they use, use weird the expressions youth, youth language yes we say yeah. bro <laughs> this is just a very simple example Social development is so important and it develops, of course, um, in the stage also we have these relationship development, orientation, a lot of insecurity. So we should just be gentle with them. Mm -hmm. They and can't patient. do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. And patient. Yeah. 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 It will go away. Talking about the language <laughs> development, mm -hmm. I just had someone writing a German story using the word sass. Ah. Mm -hmm. I'd, I've never heard about that. And I said, süß, the German word for mm -hmm. sweet, we, we spell differently. And the kids were just laughing because they said, I didn't write süß, I wrote sass. And I did. <laughs> they had to explain yeah. what it means. And you it was know completely what? new. The most embarrassing thing is when you think, okay, use the language that your children are using to maybe be on an understanding level. It's just embarrassing for them. So don't do yeah. it. So I try yeah. to, to use once or twice <laughs> the language of my voice just to appear a bit cool um no no no, no. <laughs> no i also get the look when i try to be cool at you home. get the look <laughs> get the look <laughs> mommy oh God. don't do that no. oh no mama no <laughs> don't come and embarrass me no no don't do that <laughs> yeah poor justus because i'm teaching his class oh and, poor thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah what We have now a lot of scientific background mm -hmm. here, but what is this all about? 
It's When we say that, two faces. Two faces. Can you give us an example? I can something? give you an example um, of my daughter when she went to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, I was always wondering who the kindergarten teachers are talking about because they were talking about a quiet, very friendly, helpful <laughs> little girl, mm -hmm. age three. And I got the feeling I'm taking home the wrong child every day because <laughs> I had a three-year-old at mm -hmm. home screaming and yelling at me mm -hmm. Um, pushing me away because she wanted to do everything herself. Oh, yeah. I wasn't allowed to help. I wasn't allowed to say something. And one day she completely freaked out in the changing room of kindergarten. And then the kindergarten teacher like came out and she looked at Paula and it was like, ah, ah, <laughs> now I see now what I you're see talking about. <laughs> And so yeah, that's the child I'm mm -hmm. taking home. Yeah. So it's so. all about perspectives, right? Yeah. So when you have, for example, a, a child that is at home, a very pleasant, friendly kid could be an annoying child in school. Or the other way around. Or the other way Sometimes around. we have very, very friendly kids mm -hmm. in school, very mm -hmm. helpful. Um, and then we hear from the parents. That they're not at all. <laughs> they're not like that at home. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Now? Yeah. Re imagine. Yeah. We get an email from as, school. As a parent. Yeah. We bring it up. Okay. And this is something I can rely on because as the mom of two boys who went also through this IB school here, um, yeah, I received a few emails. Or we as fam as parents received a few emails. So... Example, you get an email, your child repeatedly behaves disruptively in class and is cheeky towards the teachers and maybe towards the peers. Any warning, any conversation have already taken place, nothing helped. Now it's time to contact the parents. That could be the email that I got, <laughs> to be honest. Parents' reaction, well, <laughs> what? This not, is impossible. Not my child. Not my child. My child never, I never said that to be honest, but <laughs> my child <laughs> never behaves like this at home. Mm. Think about different perspectives, right? Okay. So, but now what we say in German. Now we have the salad. Mm -hmm. Now we have the salad. <laughs> What's going on now? Ooh. So. There is a complicated or a complicated situation, yeah? Different perspectives. In school, you receive the email, this is the perspective of the school, yeah. right? Yeah. So, Beata, what can the school do? The school can seek an individual dialogue with the child. So we can talk to the, the child asking what's going on. Yeah. We can remind the child of our school rules. Yeah, super important, actually. Mm -hmm. We can try to get the involved parties to sit down and talk about the issue, to, trying to see all perspectives of the people involved. Means also like other kids when they're involved. Other yeah. kids, mm -hmm. exactly. We can ask you, Tamara, for help. Yes, if, true. If needed. True. As a counselor, right, sometimes, depending on the severity of the situation, I can maybe support like a mediation or also to, to get inside of the backgrounds a bit yeah. more as not being a teacher. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. this gives security to yeah. kids too or safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's a child that shows, as we would say, extreme behavior because the child might be over-adjusted or very defiant, mm -hmm. then we should have like more attention on that child mm -hmm. to see what's, mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And what always, always, always helps is a transparent exchange of information with the parents. So whatever we see in school mm -hmm. is our side of the perspective mm -hmm. part, the, the mm -hmm. 
um, the coin, our side of the coin. <laughs> and now we need to, to see the other side or hear the other side. Yeah. The other perspective of what's going on. And only both sides can help us to see the whole picture and to understand what's going on. Right. And when I receive this kind of email as a parent, right, then all these other things you were just talking before already happened. Yeah. So it's not that I out of the blue get an email. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Usually we're trying to tick all these boxes. Mm -hmm. We talk to the kids. Mm -hmm. we, we talk to the parties involved in school, the other children. We're trying for help if needed mm -hmm. and contact you. And if, if we've ticked all these boxes and nothing changes or nothing really helped, then we're trying to get the parents on board and try to have a deeper look into the situation and trying to find out or investigate mm -hmm. uh, what's going on. So yeah. as a parent, I can be sure when I receive an email, all these things have done. No? And it's actually a good feeling to know this, that the, par uh, that parents, that the teachers or staff members or counselor or whoever is interested to solve that situation yeah. already first on a low level base in school. Yeah. Yeah. So you said you received an mm -hmm. email like that. Yes. <laughs> the boys didn't really behave well. Mm -hmm. What did you do as a mom? As it would be, yeah, as parents, you can really, what you should do is talk to your child. Yeah. Talk to your child and ask about the reasons for the mail. Really what happened, right? But then comes the actually very important part. Because when you remember the different stages of development, still self-centered, also in the development between six and 11 and so on, or getting self-centered again, because you try to get your own orientation, you definitely have to filter your child's information because they tend to put themselves in a better light. Mm -hmm. yeah? Or they tend to leave out some information that maybe puts them in the not so nice light. Mm -hmm. So you have to be aware that not everything the kids say is maybe connected to what really happened. Yeah. yeah. Or there are some things missing. Yeah. Um, but they're not lying on purpose. Nee, not really. Sometimes kids do that, but it's more really from their defensive way or their protect self-protection what yeah. they say to put themselves in a better light so probably they leave things out or to present as i said to present themselves good or they tend to blame others for mm -hmm. things that happen yeah. or the a complete cluelessness oh, i don't know what happened yeah. this can happen too yeah? that sometimes helps well <laughs> <laughs> Still, if you, you should not get mad no, when the conversation yeah. goes in like that. Although we tend to be, as parents, be annoyed, especially when you receive more than one email like this. Yeah? You should not give in after the first version. Mm -hmm. yeah? You should really keep on it and keep asking questions. And do not your, suggest um, to your child that he or she can get away with this mm -hmm. behavior. Yeah. Because as we just said, when you get an email from school about an incident or about something that that happened something has happened before yeah the whole the whole content we don't know yet yeah. yeah but we can only get everything in the right light when we have all perspectives together so we can't say okay i will go to school and i will tell them off yeah. this cannot yeah. be this is yeah. not the right way and to the, deal with it so the mm -hmm. first version of my child's story about mm -hmm. what might have happened in school take it yes and there is for sure it's true yeah? but, but, but maybe not, not it's not complete that's what i yeah yeah i uh, so that's what we expected as parents but also in school we uh, um, experienced as parents but also in school we we experienced that um that the stories they tell us are or their perspective mm -hmm. let's say it like this yeah. is their perspective with Missing out some important points sometimes. Gaps. Gaps, <laughs> what we can say. Right? Or like just to say, okay, if they can't really fix the story to, uh, to a version that brings themselves in a good light, they even show complete cluelessness. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So you should really not give in. And it's always recommended to take this, get the perspective of your child, ask back and ask back and ask back, but then contact the school, mm -hmm. yeah? 
contact them for a transparent exchange yeah. of things. It's not yeah. about blaming or so. It's yeah. about getting the full picture, yeah. getting the full light. So as a parent, I'm always free to contact the school Absolutely. if something is unclear yeah. or seems to be a little bit weird. Yeah. It's Absolutely. always a good choice to contact the school and ask for their perspective Definitely. to get the whole picture right. from and parents' side mm -hmm. as and well as from school side. Absolutely. Yeah. And also give the children the signal that we are talking to each other. Yeah. 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 So it's it's a good it's a good point for them to realize, okay, it doesn't really make sense to change the story or yeah. to Uh, create some yeah. gaps, as you say, yeah. because they're talking to each other, you know, or even get the party involved that maybe when there was a fight between two students, get the other parents involved. Yeah. yeah? That's yeah. always quite good. So I think the main thing here is that whoever starts the email conversation is should know that it's, it's allowed to contact mm -hmm. the other party. Yeah. And it should be free of blame it's Absolutely. it's, it's mm. just an exchange mm -hmm. it's it's a discussion we're having about genau. a specific topic yeah because And we search for reasons exactly because yeah? it's, mm -hmm. it, in, it's in all our interest to help the child mm -hmm. if if a child is struggling with extreme behavior mm -hmm. yeah what could Can be, be everything yeah could be everything yeah. exactly And so we should work together as a team mm -hmm. to get the best out of the child and to solve the problem or the issue, the situation. Absolutely, because it should be solution-based. Mm -hmm. yeah? It's not problem-based. Of course, we need to figure out what's going on, what's happening here, what is the background. But the, the goal should be to have a solution. Yeah. And the, uh, the solution should be found together yeah not by one side in an open or one conversation you know in yeah. an open conversation again free of any blame yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and as we said <laughs> the child should be aware that parents and school or teachers or staff members are working together and that we exchange information yeah right so that's what we have to and this is the ideal situation an agreement is made no? yeah but important is that the agreement is um Yeah, fulfilled or um, adhered by all parties. Mm -hmm. Not that we do something that we agreed on and at home everything is different. Yeah. Or the other way around yeah. could be yeah. too. Or no, the it should child be is stepping open out. communicated to the child, the parents yeah. and the teachers in school. So we're all mm -hmm. on the same page and no one can get away with, I didn't know that. No. So now yeah. we had the situation, cheeky child in school, right? Mm -hmm. And friendly face at home. But what... If it's the other way around, Beate. Yeah. You just told her. <laughs> like, I like mean, that's, that's in the past. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's far, far, so, far, far in the past. Yeah, when you say it, it, at school, a very kind and friendly child. Yeah. Very adjusted, hardworking, very social, very helpful. Yeah. And at home. The boom. boom the boom. The volcano <laughs> boom. explodes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It all comes out at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yelling, the screaming, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, is this happening often? What do you think? I think the it kids? happens more often than we think. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. because um, it's it's good to have a child that's always nice. It's in I in an ideal world. Yeah, close. Yeah, but I think <laughs> yeah. reality looks different. And to be honest, when I get home after a long day of working, whatever work it is. In my case, it's being with children all day long. Talking all day long. Talking mm. all day long, coming home, mm. two more children. <laughs> it's, it's not the same, but still, you had a long day to work. Mm. You still have the responsibility. You have the household, cooking, tidying up, whatever it is you have to do at home. At some point you come home, you just want to lay down on your couch, relax, and then someone comes and, can you do this? Can you do this? And mm -hmm. I need to go here, I need to go there, and whatever it is. And mm -hmm. you're totally annoyed. And even as a parent, as an adult, as an sometimes adult. Mm -hmm. you freak out. 
you're getting unfair yelling at someone who, who's not to blame at all, but it's just <laughs> there. Unfair, wrong, right? wrong time, wrong place. <laughs> yeah. And we are the adults. We should mm -hmm. we should be able to handle mm -hmm. this kind of emotion how to control ourselves and control ourselves and now imagine your child comes home after a long day in school mm -hmm. especially our school starting at 8 30 finishing at 3 10 3 15 it's a long day being with other people other mm -hmm. kids handling a lot of different situations and are in the developmental stage where they are right and they are in the developmental stage so At some point, they have to let it out. Yeah. And if it's not in school, it's at home. I agree. Yeah. And probably we often don't know it because nobody tells us, of course. Yeah. This is happening at home. It's private and so on. But I think you're right. It happens more often than we think. So, do you have an idea what parents can do when this boom explosion is coming or is exploding or is happening so I think what's quite natural is if you are, your child is annoyed after a long day in school, you are annoyed after a long day of work. And what quite naturally happens is I think you're starting as a parent to yell back, mm -hmm. which doesn't make anything better. No, I can say that from my own experience. <laughs> and at some point you have to realize all this yelling, all this freaking out or this emotional explosion has nothing to do with me personally mm -hmm. it's just my my child being like overwhelmed by an exhausting day so you have to take it right and i just have to take it mm -hmm. take it as a mother and just listen yeah. to it and I don't have to say anything back. I just, I think the main part here is just listen mm -hmm. to all there. the yelling and just be there and give the space mm -hmm. the child needs in this situation. And sometimes it's after five minutes of yelling, it's over and then the crying comes. Yeah, but you have to sit that out too. Yeah. No? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when the anger is decreasing, let's yeah. say it like this, then you can start a little conversation with them about what's going on or about how do you feel yeah what happened yeah. what's Again, the reason naming, right? yeah what's mm -hmm. the reason behind all this yelling and crying and being annoyed yeah did something happen in school yeah <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so it's actually we should always remember that they're children and that What we expect from us, né? that we control our emotions, mm. what we sometimes can't do, uh, we can't expect the same from our kids, mm. right? They need this kind of outbreak yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And to be honest, I mean, I've, I'm pretty sure you agree. When they feel safe enough to, at home, they will do it at home. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. Because this is the safe place yeah. where you can do it, right? We still love them. Yeah. Even... And they know this. After all this yelling. Yeah. Nothing will happen. Nothing bad will happen if I, no. if I yell and scream. And since they know this and yeah. they're deep heart, they are safe enough to do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. But do you think I should reach out to the school if they have these outbreaks more, probably more often? Or what do you think? I think it's never a mistake to reach out to someone who's experienced in this field mm -hmm. and especially the teachers in school they they do know a lot of families mm -hmm. and kids and different emotions and i mean we're dealing with all kinds of yeah. emotions like, like every, on every on a daily basis mm -hmm. every day and some of us at, ho at home as well <laughs> um mm -hmm. so If if you feel as a parent it would be great to talk to someone and it, you don't want to talk to a friend or to to a family member because for for whatever reason mm. it's always good to reach out to someone in school you feel comfortable and it's like with. the other way around get to get clarification maybe about what what's yeah. going on is there something we should know yeah or something to reach out yeah. to right. 
especially mm. if it happens like every day and mm. after after the screaming and yelling and you already gave your, your child some space to calm down and the talking starts and every day this these emotions are related to something that happened in school especially mm. in a, a situation like that I would definitely reach out yeah, to the school and the homeroom teacher and ask for for, for information for a first. meeting and, yeah. and mm -hmm. how how does my child behave in school because yeah. my child comes home like three three days a week or every day of the school week and is crying is completely or angry or, angry yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh And obviously something happens in school, but I don't yeah. know exactly well, what it is, or is I assume something yeah. is happening, or my child said something mm. happened in school, and we can't clarify the situation, but we we mm. need to do something about it. And again here, it's about filtering, because yeah. in an emotional outbreak, you can't give an objective description of a situation that bothers you. It's... Yeah. it's Everything is full of emotion and full of anger and full of tears and you have to filter a few things out and then, yeah, you can probably um, get more information in the school and maybe this, and again, have a solution-based thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So the school can actually pay a, a lot of attention or particular attention on kids who are then quite over-adjusted. Mm -hmm. The, what we call actually the invisible children, mm. yeah, the kids who are what we say very lovely, helpful, quiet, quiet yeah. yeah, do the work, are friendly, social, yeah. So we also keep a closer eye on that when when they are so over adjusted that they appear to be as we say invisible, mm. yeah. So on the other way around, also quite excited children, yeah. Now we keep a close eye on them too, yeah, because it can be really stressful. To be mm -hmm. like over adjusted the whole yeah. day or the, the whole school honest. day. It's exhausting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is, I guess, a lot of people or a lot of parents say that in meetings, the, when they say, um, yeah, but the, uh, I, I don't understand why my kid is so angry at home now or has always sore bellies mm -hmm. or because the report cards are super, the yeah. parent teacher conferences are so good. Yeah, so this is something where we should probably also seek in the school a dialogue with mm -hmm. the child when we think, okay, we look, we see you're quite exhausted, but you try to fit in all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. And we also should see, or like before, the other way around, work solution based. Also, here, what can we do together no, to help, yeah. or um, what can the school particularly do? to help a child to um, don't be in this oh, stressful situation. terrible stressful yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. I try to imagine now to adjust all the time and to fulfill all the expectations yeah. in school all the time yeah. and be again back to our science part in a in a developmental stage where I don't know who I am actually mm. yeah or what is the world around me and I try to learn to make relationships and yeah. so on it's so hard yeah It's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder they are exhausted. No, yeah. actually, I agree, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but to, to uh, uh, give a word to the parents, uh, we are also just humans, right? So yeah. it's hard for us to, to, to take outbreaks all the time or to have a conflict with a child all the time. So when you need advice or when as a parent you need advice and I did it by myself too I, I checked in with uh, with the school for a conversation with people there just to get their perspective if I'm doing the right thing yeah. as a parent yeah. or if I'm completely wrong or me too yeah yeah, yeah that's and that's okay yeah it's absolutely okay to do yeah. so and yeah I think we should promote this a bit more yeah, yeah. Yeah, Just ask feel, for support. Exactly. Feel comfortable talking to Definitely. your child's teacher yeah. and ask for the other side of the coin. How does it look like in school? Mm -hmm. And only if you if you hear and see the other side, you can see the whole picture of your child. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can understand better what's going on in your child's mind, What are, what's going on with all these emotions 
that come around and sometimes mm. in your face after school and mm. just try to take it as it is. Don't take it personally. No, no, that's it. Yeah, It's hard sometimes. It's really hard yeah. and tricky. So we are not, we say this as parents, yeah, our kids went or are still in, in the IB school and it's it's a long day for them it's yeah. a tricky day it's a hard day but and we went and are still going through the developmental stages of of, of children and this is also hard nobody tells you that when you get a yeah. child that it's not always a sunny. pink cloud and yeah. sunny yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. also it's hard work to be honest it's not not always easy so when we put everything together we should say All children have actually the so-called two faces, yeah. but not everybody displays it yeah. so extremely. So what we just were talking about are the extremes. Yeah. 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 Right? That's true. Yeah. yeah. So it can have a weakened form too. Yeah. Or and waves. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Better days, not so good days. And, and what, it's depending really what they can. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And there's also not a one-size-fits-all solution. Every child is different. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely worth trying to find an individual solution for my individual child. Yeah. yeah. We just want, actually what we wanted to do with our little chat here is to make... People aware that this phenomenon of a two faces child is existing actually, and how or give some hints or so strategies to respond in the appropriate way. And also, there, there is no one size fits all response thing, but it's more about yourself. You can tell yourself, okay, so something is going on here, I stay calm, yeah, and I will check what's going on, yeah, right. Kids are like that. Sometimes they are lovely at home and not so lovely in school. And sometimes and they are super lovely in school and not so lovely at home. And sometimes we don't even see a big difference. It's also in school. We have kids yeah. who appear the same. Yeah. They, they also have that, but not so clear, yeah. right? So we are not here, actually, going to tell other people how they should educate their children no. or, or raise the kids. No. Do we? No. 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 Absolutely not. I think every parent is an expert on their own child yeah. and they know the needs and the yeah the personalities of the yeah. kids quite well although sometimes you have a big question mark in your brain and yeah. you think what yeah. yeah but all in all um we just want to make sure I guess together right you can do better no? yeah it's easier to manage things when you have someone who's helping you and it feels yeah. good to find out Yeah. That you're not alone with this. <laughs> right. Yeah. There, there are lots of other parents mm -hmm. facing the same issues with their children. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 I don't want to say it feels good that they have mm -hmm. the same problems. No. But it feels good that I'm not alone Absolutely. in this. It's not only my kids no. who freak out once in a while. It's also the other ones. Right. And you can work as a team. As a parent, you have the upbringing of your child. And the school as educators yeah. of your child. So, as parents, we know we have kids, right? Yeah. We love them deeply and Absolutely. unconditionally. Absolutely. However, they are sometimes quite annoying. Yeah, and probably they think we are annoying too. I, I guess. just wanted to say, so so are we? <laughs> <laughs> so are we, right? But as as uh, as a teacher or a counselor, so working in a school, we see also the other perspective, right? And yeah. we see how difficult it is for children to grow up yeah. and we can just help them, yeah, support them as a team together, yeah. right? They're all great yeah. and all the difficulties will get better. I tell you, they will just get different. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Beata, thank for you, this Tamara. little first chat. We hope you had a nice time listening to us. And we will let you know as soon as possible about our next topic. In June. Yeah. Taboo Talks with Beate Burger and, and Tamara Mittelstedt. Bye bye. Bye.